on this Monday. Thank you for joining us for WRTV special coverage of the funeral of Deputy John Durham, a deputy with the Marion County Sheriff's Department who was killed in the line of duty last week. Yeah, thanks for joining us. I'm Nicole Griffin alongside Mark Mullins. We are standing by waiting for the funeral coverage for Deputy Durham to begin at Gainbridge Field House, where we're expecting hundreds of law enforcement members to honor the life of the deputy who served 38 years for the Marion County Sheriff's Department. He is known as a guy who was just very kind and loved his community and loved to serve. He had four sons, leaves behind a significant other and his parents as well. Yeah, hundreds have already been filing past his casket at Gamebridge Fieldhouse, and we are waiting for the ceremony to begin. He was only 61 years old and had mm -hmm. so much life left in him as we got, get to know a little bit about him this week uh, in his passing. Uh, he's someone who was constantly making jokes, making people laugh, uh, loved sports and loved his four boys and passed his love of sports to his four sons, you know, always uh, spending time with them, tossing the ball, teaching them how to play <laughs> golf, you know, very much a family man. Yeah, he went to Lawrence North High School and played five different sports at Lawrence North. And as we mentioned, he served 38 years with the Marion County Sheriff's Department. What you're looking at is a slideshow that they're showing at Gamebridge <laughs> Fieldhouse, uh, showing the photos from uh, throughout the years of uh, Deputy Durham's life. And now a live feed there of the file by as we watch uh, sworn officers from around the Marion County Sheriff's Department, the IMPD and departments around the state pay their respects as they walk past his uh, casket there draped in the American flag. Here in studio today with us is Lieutenant Bruce Barnes with the Noblesville Police Department. Lieutenant, thank you so much for being here with us today. I understand you said you, you've served with the Honor Guard for 25 years, so you've been here honoring law enforcement officers. Kind of tell us the emotions of a day like this. Yeah, it's really hard to put in words, um, and we do it all too often, mm -hmm. um, as unfortunate as it is. Um, but we, we come and we reflect upon the life that they live, yeah. the service that they provided to their community, um, and, and we celebrate that as best we mm -hmm. can. The situation is tragic, but nonetheless, 39 years of service, 38 years of service, that's phenomenal, wow. and, and we should be um, thankful for every minute of that. So we try to spend as much of the day embracing that and, and um, doing the best that we can to, to cope with the emotions that we're going through. Right, this is a solemn day uh, mm -hmm. on the one hand, but also, as you mentioned, a celebration of life Absolutely. and a celebration of service. And we'll be seeing that here throughout the day as we uh, mark the different locations here at Gamebridge Fieldhouse, um, then for his final call, and then at Crown Hill Cemetery. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, it doesn't get any easier as you, as you progress through, whether it was visitations yesterday, the service today, or Crownland uh, Cemetery when we when we get out there. It's, uh, it's very touching throughout, but you'll find the fine young men and women of, of law enforcement will do a phenomenal job in honoring him today. And we're seeing live images here from Gainbridge Fieldhouse, and we see that file by going by the casket there. You know, we see that at every law enforcement funeral. Why is that so important in such a special moment of these services? Again, it's just our way individually of showing our respect yeah. um, and honoring uh, Deputy Durham uh, during this time and, and showing to the family in the Marion County Sheriff's Department our support. Um, not only will you see officers uh, in Indiana, but you'll find mm -hmm. officers throughout the entire country that will come to pay their respects today. So it's something that we can do just to add to it, um, again, individually to, to, to show our sentiments, again, to the family and, and, uh, and to the Berrien County Sheriff's Department. And it's been a tough few weeks for law enforcement here in central Indiana. We've lost three officers in the line of duty, and you talked about showing that, that support for the family. Can you tell us a little bit about just how you all become like a family in law enforcement and why it's so important for all these officers to come out and show that support? Yeah. So much of what we do, um, you know, we like to think that, that it's all good times, but it's not. It's, it's, we know that when we suit up every day, we put on that uniform, we mark 1041, or we get our tour of duty, mm -hmm. that just about anything can happen. Mm -hmm. um, and that brings out a, a bond in one another that we have to rely or depend on um, each other. Um, and that's a hard bond to break, mm -hmm. and it only gets stronger as time goes on. So when we do lose one of our colleagues, one of our friends, uh, one of our partners, um, again, it's just so difficult to express the amount of emotion um, that we're going through uh, those times. And again, we've, we've had far too many. Uh, we know there will likely be those in the future. And um, mm -hmm. 
you know, we'll, we'll try to deal with it the best we can. Um, but we're thankful for the community support. Yeah. That always helps us as well to, to show us that uh, they're proud and, and respectful of the job that we're trying to do out here. And, um, but, it, but it's never easy. So. Lieutenant Deputy Durham is the sixth Indiana line of duty death just this year. And not more than a week ago, just a little more than a week ago, we laid to rest a Indiana State Police Trooper, Aaron Smith. Mm -hmm. It is just the, the frequency that we're seeing this happen it is how to be so heartbreaking to so many who, who put the uniform every, on every day and wear the badge. And again, it's, it's not every instance or every encounter that we have with the community is going to bring about this result, right? It mm -hmm. truly is the exception. Mm -hmm. um, but it's difficult um, as, as we go through these times, as, as we continue to work, it's hard for this to ever leave your mind, right? Mm -hmm. it, if, it, if it happened to Deputy Durham, it could happen to anybody. Um, and uh, so that's one thing that's always a bit of a challenge. And, and we ask the community for their patience with us, as sometimes we get into situations that may not seem that, um, um, that difficult for them, but it's certainly difficult for us as we try to foresee what lies ahead. And uh, a lot of times we just simply don't know. So, um, so yeah, it's a bit of a challenger. You're looking live at Gamebridge Fieldhouse as sworn officers from around the state file past the casket of Deputy John Durham, a deputy with the Marion County Sheriff's Department who, who died in the line of duty on July 10th. There you see a photo of Deputy Durham in the white suit along with his four <coughs> sons there who he loved so much, spent most of his time with them. Uh, John Jr., Corey, Robert, and Bryce there. Uh, Deputy Durham, you know, really put so much effort into spending time with his family and his sons and his significant other. And we've learned that he has an extended family of law enforcement. His wife, or his significant other rather, worked for the Marion County Sheriff's Office in the medical office as a deputy and has since around 1997. We've also learned that one of Deputy Durham's sons was starting as a detention deputy going through the training at the academy just about a month ago wanting to follow in his father's footstep. Sheriff Kerry Forrestal has says he has many other family members. We also learned that he had two sons serving overseas in the military. So a family of service dedicated to, you know, just keeping their community safe, keeping our country safe. And uh, sadly, we learned that the two sons who were serving overseas learned about their father's death. Mm -hmm. uh, the military managed to fly them to each other before they were flown here oh, wow. together. So they were able to um, at least be together in this uh, time of tragic news um, as they were making that long journey from overseas uh, back to be with family uh, and to pay their respect to their father. We've also learned one of his sons earlier last week shared um, their last message together and it was a text message about a Reggie Miller jersey. He's being laid to rest today. You know, their service is being held here at Gamebridge Fieldhouse, but that text message was about a jersey that he got framed on his wall. His last message to his dad, he was just so excited to show him that because they shared that bond, loving the Indiana Pacers together. Johnny Durham called his dad a hero, said he wants everyone to come out today to honor him, and they wanted to thank Gamebridge Fieldhouse for everything that they're doing for their family there today. Right, we're not, it's not lost on us that uh, the service will be held at Gamebridge Fieldhouse, mm -hmm. the home of the Pacers, especially knowing Do Deputy Durham's love of the game of basketball there. He was a five-sport star athlete mm -hmm. at Lawrence North High School, played football, basketball, baseball and track and golf. Wow. Yeah, and his picture was on the Lawrence North Stadium uh, for so long until the stadium was torn down. And we've learned he's just, he was a hard worker. He worked a lot of overtime. He could never pass a pawn shop. This is a funny note here in the obituary. Without stopping and had a good eye for finding quality treasures, which he shared <laughs> generously. <laughs> so we're loving to learn a little bit more about this man who served 38 years as a detention deputy for the Marion County Sheriff's Office. He was a giver. On the left side of your screen, you're seeing video of a replica of Deputy Durham's uh, wagon that he drove for the Marion County Sheriff's Department. And many people have been stopping by there at the Community Justice uh, Campus to leave mementos, notes, tokens, uh, the golf clubs that you see there, uh, ways the community is saying thank you for your service, we will miss you, we honor you, um, and this has been going on all week. The, the van's been parked there outside uh, the uh, Community Justice Campus for the last week, as you see there with cards and notes for Deputy Durham and his family. Yeah, that card there that you're seeing was actually from his significant other. You're seeing it saying, I'm just so lost without you. 
our Caitlin Kendall has had some time to talk to her and obviously her and the entire family are just dev devastated. She even told our Caitlin Kendall that what she'll miss most about Deputy Durham is his laughter that can make anyone smile, his jokes that he thought were funny, and his incredible amount of love for his family and his four sons. We also heard earlier last week from Executive Officer Tanisha Creer, the head of the Adult Detention Center, who just spoke on his legacy as a law enforcement officer. She said he's loving and kind, willing to go over and beyond what was asked of him as a deputy for the Sheriff's Office. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant Bruce Barnes is with us here from the Noblesville Police Department and Lieutenant Barnes uh, also serves on the Honor Guard a and Lieutenant tell us a little bit about the two officers we're seeing on either side of Deputy Durham's casket there. Um, we're noticing one of them is wearing the, the red uh, rope around the, the shoulder. Like you have there. Yeah, tell us a little bit about what we're seeing, the role that they play, and why they're so important in this process. Yeah, so uh, in our funerals, um, it, they're rooted deep in, in tradition. A lot of it comes from the military. Um, the guards that are standing um, by the casket right now are, are considered casket watch guards. And uh, so we ensure that from the moment of death that we have an officer um, with, um, um, with the officer at all times. Um, and uh, so what you're seeing here is very ceremonial in the sense that those two uh, casket guards will stay there um, once all the uh, officers have finished filing by and paying their respects. Uh, those two casket guards will be released. Um, and then that's when the uh, ceremony will actually begin at the funeral. You were saying this is a very emotional moment but they have to stay very focused in this role that they have yeah we have to rise to the occasion much like we do on a regular basis right as police officers uh, oftentimes we're forced with a lot of challenges uh, mm -hmm. in our job and um, this is no different we have to rise above that and, and sometimes we have to deal with the emotion uh, that's going on and, and this is no different uh, those officers and, and every officer that's a part of this honor guard ceremony is is deeply troubled by this um, mm -hmm. but it's important that we stay disciplined and and again we we stay very respectful of the positions mm -hmm. that uh, they're honoring right now doing their jobs and um, and you'll see as this process goes along, uh, every uh, every officer that's a part of that honor guard or color guard detail will, will be doing just the same. And again, we're trying to show respect and honor um, to uh, to the family of, of Deputy Durham and and, uh, and the colleagues at the Marion County Sheriff's Department. When when um, we see the the death or experience the death of a officer in the line of duty. These two officers, there's always a constant guard uh, uh, mm -hmm. near them until yeah. the time that the officer is late to rest. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. And, and again, that's just part of the process uh, where we look at that as a, as a fallen member of, of our brotherhood and sisterhood, and we owe it to them. Um, and again, it's, it's deep rooted in ceremony in the sense that, in tradition, in the sense that we've got your back. Um, and um, so again, and that's very moving. Um, and uh, we typically have so many officers that are available and want to do it that sometimes those those shifts are 15 minute shifts sometimes they're half hour shifts um, and um, but but that's what we're going to do until the moment um, uh, we get to the cemetery and, and finalize this process um, we'll do our part to ensure we're paying tribute uh, to deputy Durham and if you're just joining us, we're looking at live images here from Gamebridge Fieldhouse for the funeral of Deputy John Durham killed in the line of duty, Marion County Sheriff's Office deputy. And we talked to FOP President Rick Snyder earlier last week, and he mentioned just how difficult of a time this is for law enforcement, saying that, you know, every family is feeling the impact of this line, and line of duty death, and it just keeps compounding. How are you personally feeling? How is your family doing at this time? Yeah. Yeah, that's always tough because you have to have that conversation, right? Yeah. Uh, but the reality is we, uh, we, we have that conversation early and often. Mm -hmm. uh, getting into this line of work, again, it comes with certain inherent risk. Um, and those risks, we face them every single day. Um, but in order to function and do so in such a way that, that we're effective when we get the job done, you somehow have to come to terms with that. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing that's difficult, and I think maybe... Um, most people really don't get it's you know we love our families more than we love anything but here's the reality uh, the moment we put that uniform on we mark 1041 and we go to work it's the community that becomes number one mm -hmm. to us right mm -hmm. as much as we would love 
to get back home to our families? The reality is this, and, and I have no doubt that Deputy Durham would say the same thing, is it's not whether we get home, it's whether you get home. Mm. You are the ones that we're protecting. And, and that's difficult. We, we, uh, we take great pride and honor in that. So don't, don't get us wrong there. But that sometimes is a difficult thing for our families to manage, right? Uh, but that's how much we love our responsibilities, our, our, our part in the community, the service that we provide. And, um, and that's why it's that's called the ultimate up sacrifice. It absolutely right. is. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. what we signed up for. So. And that's interesting that you bring that up because Rick Snyder also said he gave nearly 40 years of selfless service to his community working as a detention deputy and never wavered on what he does. Couldn't be said any better. In just a few moments, the service for Deputy John Durham will begin. We're expecting to hear from uh, Indianapolis Mayor Joe Hogsett, along with Marion County Sheriff Kerry Forrestall. We also understand that two of Deputy Durham's sons will speak at the ceremony, Corey Durham and uh, John Durham Jr., uh, known as Jordan, uh, commonly known as Jordan. Uh, and then we'll also have a, a couple of other relatives that will give remarks as well. The ceremony is uh, going to begin momentarily. And take a look there on stage. You see that jersey that we were talking about framed, the jersey and the shorts of Reggie Miller. It was the last text message that Johnny Durham shared with his father, a bond that they shared, a bond that they will greatly miss. You're watching coverage live here on WRTV as we honor the life of Deputy John Durham. These are live images from Gamebridge Fieldhouse. We understand that uh, Deputy Durham uh, was not only a family man, but also a man who loved animals. Uh, he fed stray cats <laughs> who came to uh, live in his yard, uh, as well as his outdoor pets there. So um, those simple gestures really show the character of a man, uh, how he was a nurturing person, how he took care of, of his loved ones <laughs> and the animals that, uh, you know, came to be. Yeah, we talked to a former colleague of his deputy, um, his name was Jimmy Ramsey, and he says Deputy Durham was a rare breed. He says he was just an amazing person, a very rare individual, and he was also a mentor to Jimmy. He was the type of person that would literally give the shirt off of his backs, in, in Jimmy's words there. And as we see here, the honor guard is being relieved from their duties at the casket for the time being and replaced with those from the Marion County Sheriff's Department. Let's listen in as the service uh, begins momentarily.
You're looking at live pictures from Gamebridge Fieldhouse this morning as officers from around our state and from the country uh, file in past the casket of Deputy John Durham, a deputy with the Marion County Sheriff's Department, who was killed in the line of duty on July 10th. Today, we are seeing he will be laid to rest at Crown Hill Cemetery. We want to thank you for joining us right now as we bring you these live images from Gainbridge Fieldhouse. We're seeing one by one these officers here paying their respects to Deputy John Durham. And we are joined here in studio by Lieutenant Bruce Barnes from the Noblesville Police Department. Thank you so much for being here. You've had extensive experience as 25 years in the Honor Guard. Kind of explain to us what we're seeing right here in these live images. Yeah, so uh, with a uh Unfortunately, with each ceremony, they're a little bit different, um, and it's up to the, uh, the agency um, that lost the officer to determine um, how it is that they want to have things done, and um, we provide um, certain options, and, um, and so this is always one. Um, this is uh, typically very traditional, um, passing by the casket here. And as you can see, um, it might be a little bit hard for the viewer to see the patches, but uh, these officers, are, again, are representing not only officers from the state of Indiana, but around the country. And um, it still, it, it touches me every time I see that, to, to think that they uh, would travel so far, um, and, um, uh, but they'll pass by the uh, casket, they'll, they'll have their seat. Um, this takes obviously quite a bit of time because as you can imagine, there's an outpouring of support um, as you can see there. So um, it, it will likely easily be uh, an hour that it takes everybody to actually file by here. That's, uh, that's the number of officers that's uh, gonna be in attendance. Right, Lieutenant, we've seen um, deputies with the Marion County Sheriff's Department uh, file by. We're also seeing uh, officers with the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department, but we're also seeing, as you say, the badges from other states, including the Massachusetts uh, State Police. Uh, and so that journey they make uh, does cross many state lines. Yeah, it does, and it just truly represents, again, the brotherhood and the sisterhood that we have in law enforcement, right? Uh, because they don't do the job any different than we do it here in Indiana. We're all in this together. There's not many of us to begin with. And again, the challenges that we face on a regular basis, um, it's nice to know that others can share in those challenges because sometimes um, sometimes the, the life of a police officer isn't always understood as well as what we would like it to be. Um, and uh, But we know that when we're sitting uh, with one of our colleagues that they likely have that same experience and and uh, we're a little more at ease or, or understanding know that they've likely walked that same journey that we have. We understand the Marion County Courts are closed today so that the members there can pay their respects for Deputy John Durham, his family, and their partners at the Marion County Sheriff's Office. We've learned a lot about his life of service, 38 years as a detention deputy with the Marion County Sheriff's Office. He was 61 years old, came from a family of law enforcement, and is survived again by his parents, his significant other, and his four sons, one of them wanting to follow in his footsteps right. and be a detention be deputy as well. Had the chance to speak with uh, Marion County Sheriff Kerry Forrestal last week, and he explained that you know, 38 years of service, that uh, Deputy Durham became an expert mm -hmm. in in the uh, in the area where he was, um, and he was uh, transporting uh, uh, inmates and and uh, helping them uh, get to and from places, uh, and he became such a uh, a fixture in the role that he played at the Marion County Sheriff's Department. Um, and so 38 years speaks to just the commitment he had to the badge and to the work. Executive Officer Tanisha Creer, head of the Adult Detention Center, described him as an icon for the Sheriff's Office, saying he will never be able to be replaced. She says he was a giant and the fact that he left very large footsteps that they will now have to try to fill. He also left a legacy that will, they will always remember and carry on for the rest of their career and their lives. Just a little more than a week ago, um, a week from Friday, uh, we saw Indiana State Police Trooper uh, Aaron Smith laid to rest. Mm -hmm. uh, he was killed in the line of duty. And then the following Monday, we lost Deputy John Durham. Mm -hmm. Trooper Smith's family reached out to Deputy Durham's family to offer their words of support mm -hmm. and understanding mm -hmm. and just to bridge that, that gap to let them know that they were being thought of and supported it, really in two families' time of need mm -hmm. and tragedy. Um, and we saw that kind of um, 
familial uh, reach out last year when we lost uh, Noah Shanavez mm -hmm. and Sierra Burton, their two families uh, uh, reaching out to each other. So the bond here really extends beyond the departments. The families are really affected too. Yeah. And I know FLP President Rick Snyder had said that, you know, Deputy Durham was well loved, well respected, well known. We mentioned it nearly 40 years of selfless service and that he said that that cannot be lost on our community. He mentioned that law enforcement officers here across central Indiana really need the community support right now. They've been asking for blue lights to be turned on. Can you speak to anything you've been seeing in the Noblesville Police Department and why that support is so needed during this difficult time? Yeah, it's, it's absolutely amazing the, the uh, show of support that um, Noblesville has experienced like probably every other community in the state of Indiana. Uh, that has experienced. Um, our communities rally around us and, and they support us in more ways than we possibly can begin to imagine. Mm -hmm. And certainly, certainly when times get difficult like this, mm -hmm. there's no doubt about it uh, that they're going to be there to uplift us as best they can. Because you, know? you mentioned it at the end of the day, it's all about protecting and serving yeah. the community. That's what you guys focus on, guys and girls, yeah. when you put the uniform on each day. That's absolutely correct reaching out to the community and the community embracing. You know, we did see it, as Nicole mentioned, with the blue lights mm -hmm. that, that were turned on. Mm -hmm. um, also, there was a, a push to support Deputy Durham's family during this time. Mm -hmm. uh, the Central Indiana Police Foundation saying, if you'd like to help in any way to, to log on to their website, the Community Indiana Police Foundation, and, and provide any kind of help you can uh, for the family. So many ways that we're seeing the communities in our area uh, rally around an officer who has given the ultimate ultimate sacrifice. We want to go ahead and listen in live here as the funeral service begins for Jeopardy, John Durham. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. It was in the waters of baptism that John died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him in his eternal glory.
we invite the family to come forward to place the pall over John's body. My brothers and sisters, we have come together to renew our trust in Christ, who by dying on the cross has freed us from eternal death, and by rising has opened for us the gates of heaven. Let us pray for our brother that he may share in Christ's victory. Let us pray for ourselves that the Lord may grant us the gift of his loving constellation. Let us bow our heads and pray. O oh God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant John, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated at this time. At this time, I would like to welcome Sherry, Sheriff Kerry Forrestal to the podium, please. Thank you, Father. Senator Young, Governor Holcomb, Lieutenant Governor Crouch, Attorney General Rakita, Mayor Hogsett, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> today we gather here to honor the memory of a brave and dedicated deputy sheriff who made the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty. We stand together in solidarity, united in our grief and determination to confront the harsh reality of the dangers our law enforcement officers face each day as they protect and serve our communities. Few families know this danger better than the Durham family. John followed in his father's footsteps when he joined the Marion County Sheriff's Office, as did his brothers Jeff and Jim. And today we still have the opportunity to serve with Ramona and John's son, Corey, who is currently in the academy. This family has given so much to our community. The loss we mourn today serves as a stark reminder of the dangers and challenges that confront those who choose a life dedicated to upholding the law. It is a poignant reminder that the work of our police officers is not merely a profession, it is a calling that requires tremendous courage, unwavering commitment, and unyielding resolve to stand against the forces that threaten the safety and well-being of our society. John's death underscores the urgent need for us to come together as a community and take a stand against crime. We must ensure that those who perpetrate acts of violence and lawlessness face the full force of justice. It is a solemn duty we owe to the memory of our fallen brother and to all those who put their lives on the line daily to keep us safe. We must again send a resounding message that attacks on our law enforcement officers will not be tolerated. Those who seek to harm those who protect and serve will face the swift and unrelenting pursuit of justice. 
We must empower our law enforcement agencies with the resources, training, and support they need to effectively combat crime so that no officer is ever lost in the line of duty. Let us not forget that safety and security of our communities depend upon the bravery and dedication of our law enforcement officers, be they deputies, officers, troopers, or marshals. They are the shield that stands between chaos and order, between danger and peace. It is our collective responsibility to support them, to stand by them, to honor their sacrifices by fostering an environment that is intolerant of crime and unaccepting of violence. In the face of tragedy, let us not be disheartened or discouraged. Instead, let us be inspired by the heroism and commitment demonstrated by John. Let us channel our grief into a renewed determination to create safer neighborhoods and to continue to build bridges between communities and law enforcement. It was a solemn honor to posthumously award John with the Purple Heart and the Medal of Valor. But we can all honor the memory of Deputy John Durham by redoubling our efforts to create a society where law and order prevail, where respect for the rule of law is upheld, and where our brave men and women in uniform can serve without fear. Let us recommit ourselves to a future where our officers return home safely at the end of a shift, knowing their sacrifice is appreciated and their service is valued. Finally, let me thank our brothers and sisters in public safety who have traveled across this city, state, and nation to memorialize our fallen hero, Deputy John Durham, and to pay their respects to his family. From California to Connecticut, and from Iowa to Evansville, the support has been tremendous and we will forever be grateful. Rest in peace, John, a good and faithful servant who has hung up his campaign hat and set aside his gun belt. He doesn't need them where he is, and we thank God for that. Thank you. At this time, we would like to welcome the Honorable Joe Hogsett, Mayor for the City of Indianapolis. Good morning. I want to begin by offering to the Durham family my own personal condolences. As mayor, I offer condolences on behalf of the entire city of Indianapolis. And I offer the same to the entire Marion County Sheriff's Office family. For anyone who considers themselves to be a dedicated public servant, a man like John, gives us a valuable measure against which to compare. His time as a public protector stretched nearly 40 years. His influence stretched even beyond that. being one part of a family tradition of law enforcement professionals. The outpouring of tributes over the last week, in, including this ceremony, are a testament to the impact John had on our city through his service, the Sheriff's Office. They are also a testament to the impact that all public safety officials like him have on a community. It is tragic 
that such a servant was taken from us. When such a positive and long-serving member of our community is gone, it is indeed up to those of us who remain to follow his good example. And by the accounts of all who knew him best, John's is an example well worth following. When we do, we can preserve his memory, honor his sacrifice and commitment, and continue his commitment to serve others. The poem by Tecumseh begins with the words, so live your life that the fear of death can never enter your heart. And so it was with John Durham. Amen. At this time, we'll have a mus musical tribute by Captain Brian Wolf of the Marion County Sheriff's Office. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see.
At this time, I would like to invite Corey Durham and John Durham, Jr. to the podium for family remembrances. Uh, John Durham Jr., my dad's oldest son. I just wanted to thank everybody for coming out here. I really, really appreciate it. My family told me to, to write down a, a speech, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be my dad's son if I didn't just wing it. <laughs> if you knew him, he, he, he didn't know a stranger. Whether it was the first time he met you, it was like he knew him for 20 years. I mean, every, all the stories I heard last night was... He brought food in for everybody to work, brought in donuts. He was the life of the party. He, he, <laughs> he was a good man. He, he, he lived life to the fullest. He treated everybody with respect, the inmates, to the people he worked with, to our family. He was, he was a great man. I love you, Dad. Thank you. Wow, this is amazing, this is insane. Um, I'm Corey, John's second son. Um, gosh, this is beautiful. Um, with that, I just have one request, actually two, but um, can you guys stop looking at me with your guys' gawky eyes and crying for like five seconds? So I just have a request real quick. However you feel, how, whatever you're feeling right now, just whether it's a round of applause, whether you want to stand up and just thank God or anything. So if we could, just please, let's give Dad a round of applause and just make any noise you want. It doesn't matter. Beautiful man, thanks guys. That's I'm tired of it being quiet. I get it, everyone needs to cry, but uh, you, you can be happy, you can smile. It's okay, it's perfectly fine. And you know why? We have a beautiful man, Jesus Christ, that's sitting there with dad right now, smiling, laughing, dancing, you name it, they're doing it. Um, so it's okay. Smile when you see me. Smile. It's okay. It'll be okay. I promise. It really will. Um, won't be easy, but um, he's probably telling me to stop talking because I'm talking too much and rambling. But, uh, uh, as always, but uh, I just want to. I just want to give one joke. Super simple, nothing crazy, but I wanted Dad's favorite jokes. Um, if you know it, don't say it out loud. Um, <laughs> how many officers did it take to push an inmate down the stairs? None, he fell. <laughs> if you knew Dad, that was probably his top three. <laughs> Easy, stupid. Uh, anyways, I just can't thank you guys enough. This is absolutely beautiful. This is amazing. Dad probably would have hated it, but I don't care. Um, but anyways, yeah, I can't thank you guys enough. Sheriff's office, everybody else that showed up from different counties. This is amazing, guys. Um, but uh, yeah, I love you, Dad. We all miss you so much. We always will. But uh, we'll all stick together forever for you, man. So thank you guys. Love all you guys.
At this time, I would like for you to turn your attention to the video monitors for a special family presentation. Hello everyone, I'm Reggie Miller. And like all of you, we mourn the loss of Deputy John Durham. This is an incredibly sad time, but know this, and I would love to speak to the family, especially the boys, John or Johnny Jr., Corey, Robert, Bryce, your father was incredibly proud of each of you guys spoke of you highly. It's funny how fate is at times. Uh, the times your father and I crossed paths, um, all he could talk about was the joyful glee he had in his boys, in his family. So know this, that as he looks down upon us from the heavens, as he lights up a cigar, just know how proud that you guys have turned out to be. As Corey, as you start your journey through the police academy, Robert, Bryce, first of all, thank you for your sacrifice for your country. He's just incredibly, incredibly proud of how you guys turned out and the young men and the fathers that you guys have become. So continue that legacy in his character, in his name, because look around you at Gamebridge right now. This is how much your father was loved to have a service like this with all the people that cared and loved for him so much there in that field house. So I, I appreciate the support that you guys have given me over the years, but more importantly, we support your family and you guys through this time of need. So thank you so much, but no, your dad loved you guys very much. Appreciate your time, thank you. Thank you to Reggie for that special message. My dear brothers and sisters, please stand and bow our heads. O oh God, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant, John, whom you have called to journey with you. And since he hoped and believed in you, grant that he may be led to the true homeland to delight in his everlasting joys. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated as we listen to readings from sacred scripture. Good morning. My name is Jordan Durham, and I am John Durham Jr.'s wife and the daughter-in-law of John Sr. The first reading will be from Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was through an infliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For it before man, indeed, they be punished. Yet it is their hope, full of immortality. Chastise a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them, and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them. And as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. Those who trust in him shall understand truth. And the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. i 
My name is Nick Durham. John was my uncle. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 57. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall, not fall, we shall not all fall asleep, but we will all be changed in an instant, in the blink of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For that which is corruptible must clothe itself with incorruptibility, and that which is mortal must clothe itself with immortality. And when that which is corruptible clothes itself with incorruptibility, and that which is mortal clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, this is my commandment, love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends 
because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Where, O death, is your victory? There's no denying the anguish of these days. There's no denying the pain and anger, the grief and loss that fill our hearts and rattle our bones. By all accounts of what is good and decent, Deputy John Durham should still be with us. His laugh and his smile, his jokes and his stories, his fierce love for his boys, and his determined dedication to his job, his plans for a not-too-far-off retirement, all of that should still echo in our hearts and overflow from our bodies in these days, and it does in a way, in a different way. But it's all changed now. For those of us who knew and loved John, even the many honors bestowed on him on this day cannot ease the very real depths of sorrow that threaten to consume us. But we are a people of hope. We are a people of faith. For those of us who are Christian, we know that Death never has the last word. No matter how violent or distressing that death may be, what makes us Christian, Christ followers, is the determined conviction that death, thanks to Jesus Christ, has lost its sting. Death, thanks to the cross and the resurrection, has lost its victory. It is Jesus Christ who gives us victory. It is Jesus Christ who clothes us with immortality. It is Jesus Christ who walks day by day into the darkness of this world's evils and says no more. In the impassioned words of St. Paul, in Christ, death is swallowed up in victory. On this day that seems too much for us like Calvary, like we're standing there at the foot of the cross, we remember Jesus Christ, the Son of God and the Son of Mary, Jesus has walked this path before us. And the story doesn't end in grief. One day we pray, John and all the faithful will know this reality firsthand, that in death life is changed, not ended. The pale streaks of dawn even now rise into the darkness of our broken world with a promise of eternity, a promise of new life, St. Paul's words are bold and strong. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? But still, we remain here on this side of eternity where the grief is real and we must ask, where do we go from here? The call of Jesus is clear to love. 
to learn more and more how to have that greatest of all loves, even to lay down one's life for one's friends. To go forth from this place anguished yet hopeful, and to learn from Jesus, who showed us what it means to love one another even to the end, and to learn too from Deputy John Durham, whose sacrificial life can be a lesson for us all. But more than anything, we who mourn must recommit ourselves to establishing here on earth Christ's farewell gift of peace as best we can, and to recognize the inherent dignity present in every man, woman, and child created in God's image and likeness, to learn to seek to serve rather than to be served, and to bear fruit that will remain, fruit born of love, a love that knows no bounds. It is faith that endures. It is hope that remains. It is love and love alone that conquers. That's a lesson of the cross. It's the call of Jesus and the foundation of everything we hold dear. In times of great tragedy, most often one of two things happens. Either we turn away from God in despair, or we turn toward God in hope. Today is a day of hope. Today we turn toward God with conviction and remember that the victory is His, and it is a victory of love, a victory of life that even conquers death. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father Eric. My dear brothers and sisters, I invite you to please stand. Let us in faith call upon God, the Almighty Father, who raised Christ, his Son, from the dead, as we pray for the salvation of both the living and deceased. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For John, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. For our brother who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may now be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. For all of us who are assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. And for all those intentions we hold deeply in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. May the power of those who cry to you benefit the souls of your servants, O Lord. Free them, we pray, with all their sins and make them shares of your redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. With the longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us pray the prayer in which Jesus himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness, but strengthen our hope that one day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ conquers all things and destroys even death itself. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of John, your servant. In the sight of this world, he is now dead, but in your sight, he lives forever. Forgive whatever sins he has committed through human weakness, and in your goodness, grant him everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. At this time, we will dismiss the law enforcement officers.
We're listening to a musical tribute at the funeral for Marion County Sheriff's Deputy John Durham. His service at Gainbridge Field House just wrapping up as hundreds of officers who have attended are filing out of the facility to pay tribute as his uh, casket is put into the coach in just a few moments. Yeah, we heard an emotional tribute from both of Deputy John Durham's sons during this ceremony at Gamebridge Field House. We also saw a surprising message from the legendary Pacers player Reggie Miller. We understand that Deputy Durham was a big Pacers fan, so some very special touching moments during the service here today. A fan and a friend, Reggie Miller spoke yes. of their, their encounters, their interactions, and how at each time that they had a chance to speak, Deputy Durham and Reggie Miller, that uh, he spoke about uh, his, his sons. sons his right. Sons. And so the message uh, from Reggie Miller to uh, his sons today was that uh, your father would be proud, is proud of you. And he loves you. Yeah. Our Rachel Wilkerson was inside that service here today. That's right. She's standing outside of Gamebridge Fieldhouse as those officers begin the procession outside. Rachel, an emotional and solemn ceremony that we saw today, but one that celebrated the character of Deputy Durham. Oh, so emotional and celebration of his character. You said it spot on. His sons echoed that message throughout the service. His second one said that this today, although it is a somber moment, it was beautiful for them just to see how much support, as you mentioned, dozens of officers and law enforcement members have made their way out here as we wait for Deputy Durham to be brought out and taken to the coach. Of course, they will stand and salute once he makes his way past here. And the sheriff said today, everyone stood together in solidarity and grief. Deputy John Durham is known to his family as Johnny. He's a loving father of four, son, husband, brother, and friend. His oldest son said that Deputy Durham was the life of the party. Meeting him was like you knew him for 20 years, even if it was just for the first time. He shared with us how good of a man his father was. He loved life to the fullest. The inmates, people he worked with, they were family. John Jr., he asked the crowd to give Deputy Durham a round of applause, thanking him for his service, dedication, and ultimate sacrifice. It was a powerful moment. The claps, it spoke, they spoke volumes. It was a special moment that the family will remember and thanked everyone for. And as I mentioned, they said, although today is somber, when you see them, just know it's okay to smile. They said moving on won't be easy, but they have comfort knowing how brave Deputy Durham was and will forever cherish the memories that they have. The beautiful service was held at Gamebridge Fieldhouse for a reason. The last text message between one of the boys and Deputy Durham was about Reggie Miller. The NBA Hall of Famer spent his career with the Pacers and the Durhams were big fans. Reggie honored them with a video message appreciating their support over the year and now he's returning the favor. He said he's here for the family and he wants the boys to know how proud their father was of them. As I mentioned, his best treasure was his four sons. When he wasn't working, he was spending time with them and sharing jokes. Deputy Durham was also loved by his brothers and sisters at the Marion County Sheriff's Department. We watched dozens of them file by paying their respects to their friend and as you see they're getting ready to do the same thing right now. Hundreds of law enforcement from across the state and nation including California, Connecticut and Iowa just to name a few are out here. They also if you see are wearing a white carnation with a red dot on it that is signaling the blood that was shared. So Mark and Nicole as you said a very somber moment here but proud is the message from the family. They're so proud of Deputy Durham. A, a solemn day out there, there, Rachel, as we await the uh, casket to be led into the coach outside there. We are joined by Lieutenant Bruce Barnes from the Noblesville Police Department the, this afternoon. And, and Lieutenant, um, we saw behind Rachel uh, many of the officers lining up. What is about to happen as we await the casket to leave Gamebridge? Yeah, uh, what a wonderful tribute mm -hmm. um, to Deputy Durham. Yeah. Just, a, just a, a wonderful ceremony. Uh, so what will happen now is the officers will file out of uh, Gamebridge uh, Fieldhouse. Uh, they'll form a formation out here, and um, uh, eventually uh, Deputy Durham, the casket, will come outside. It will pass by the officers. The officers will be called to attention. They'll salute. 
Um, and then the, um, the casket will be loaded into the coach and then the uh, procession will begin. We understand that the family will be the last to leave Gamebridge Fieldhouse and we understand that they will be reunited with the casket in the lobby of Gamebridge Fieldhouse and then will be escorted outside to where all these officers are waiting. We know the casket will be then placed in the funeral coach, as you mentioned, and that procession will begin eventually going by the community justice center where he worked, where his significant other worked. And the Marion County courts are not in session today so that all of the employees there can stand outside and pay their tribute to this fallen hero. Because he interacted with them so yeah. often on a daily basis, actually. So they became, uh, like his families, mm -hmm. a familiar face every single day. Uh, Lieutenant Barnes uh, speaking to us as we were watching uh, the final officers leave uh, mm -hmm. the auditorium in Gamebridge Fieldhouse. And you were saying the family is the last to, uh, to leave and that this could take a while because this is really their mm -hmm. last chance to spend some time with, with their loved one, with Deputy Durham. That's correct, and, and just a reminder, you know, this ceremony is truly about the family, and uh, it just so happens that we're a part of it, um, but it really is about the family. So the family will spend this time uh, with Deputy Durham, and at a time in which they're ready, um, then we'll go ahead and proceed. Again, the officers, you can see them lining up right now outside, and um, uh, at some point, uh, Deputy Durham will be brought out in the uh, casket and be loaded up into the coach. As you look at these live pictures from our WRTV drone and you mm -hmm. see uh, all of the cruisers there, what's it like to see the scope mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. of the attendance uh, from the officers who, who have arrived from so many places? Yeah, I have to tell you, it's really, it's heartfelt and it, not even being there, um, just watching it uh, from your broadcast, it just, uh, it gives you chills. It just helps to be able to illustrate the amount of support that we know that we all have and we never question that. Um, but certainly in instances like this where we have a fallen officer um, and you see uh, this many uh, people come about and, and show support again for the family, for, for Deputy Durham, for the Marion County Sheriff's Office, it's just, uh, it gives you chills. And, um, but that's, that's the law enforcement family. Uh, that's the way we are. So it's not shocking. Um, and, uh, you know, I just, I, I wish these instances would happen a whole lot less, but when they do, uh, it makes us understand and appreciate that we're all in the right spot. We're, mm -hmm. we're doing what it is that, um, that we took an oath to do. And, um, and we're, we're okay with that. As difficult as it is to accept circumstances like this, we're okay with it and we'll continue to do the job. Um, so yeah, it's, it's tough. And I know Deputy Durham's son, Corey, when he looked out at the crowd, you mm. mentioned that support. He said, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. This yeah. is beautiful. Reflecting on everyone who showed up there today. And he just said, everyone stop crying. Let's celebrate yeah. because, you know, he's just so proud of his dad. He was actually trying to follow in his footsteps and will still de still do that. Trying to be a detention deputy, going to work at the adult detention center where his father worked. Right. Uh, it, it, it what, was, what we've lost here too is the opportunity for those two yeah. to work together, mm -hmm. that they were going to work at the same facility and sadly um, that's lost mm -hmm. now. So we also heard from Mayor Joe Hogsett during the ceremony and mm -hmm. uh, he called Deputy Durham a public protector, mm -hmm. you know, which is what so many uh, law enforcement officers are. Public protector, when you put on the badge, when you uh, take the oath, um, that's what you, you really uh, swear to do. 38 uh, years of service. Yes. Sheriff Kerry Forrestal described him as brave and dedicated. He said John followed in his father's footsteps, joining the Marion County Sheriff's Office. His significant other, Ramona, also works with the Sheriff's Office. And as I mentioned, his son, Corey, was hoping to do so as well. That's right. And actually, we'd like to uh, take you back to those, those moments where uh, Corey Durham spoke to the crowd and reminded everyone that it is okay to smile. Whatever you're feeling right now, just whether it's a round of applause, whether you want to stand up and just thank God or anything. So if we could, just please, let's give dad a round of applause and just make any noise you want. It doesn't matter.
a round of applause for his father there. We also heard from John Jr., mm -hmm. and that is uh, Deputy Durham's oldest son, mm -hmm. who uh, actually paid tribute to his father by saying that he didn't write a speech. <laughs> uh, he said that he was going to wing it, and actually he said, quote, I wouldn't be my dad's son if I didn't wing it. And so his words came straight from the heart, mm -hmm. uh, straight from um, what he had learned about his father in the last week through the eyes of people who interacted with his dad. He said yeah. that his father didn't know a stranger. He was the life of the party, always bringing food yeah. and donuts to work. And, and treated everyone with respect. With respect. Yeah. And what, what a wonderful legacy. Um, you know, th these boys, four fine young men, mm -hmm. um, be it community members, be it servants of the community, or servants of the country. Mm -hmm. Two of them are serving in the armed forces. Mm -hmm. What a wonderful legacy John has left mm -hmm. for them. And so in his absence, it might be difficult, but wow, the, the shoes they have to fill mm -hmm. in his honor in, in order to um, to live up to his legacy, what a, what a just um, a gift, a, a gift. Yeah. What a foundation uh, for those four young men. John Durham described his dad as just a great man, a great man who wanted to serve his community and did so for 38 years. He ended his speech saying, "I love you, Dad, and thank you." Thank you. Yeah. A powerful moment. And to your point, uh, Lieutenant Barnes, uh, Mayor Hogg said so that that. Deputy Durham's influence stretched well beyond his years of service in the Marion County Sheriff's Office, uh, 38 years of service, but the legacy is what continues, the hearts that he touched. Yeah. This is a live look here from our WRTV drone right outside of Gainbridge Fieldhouse in downtown Indianapolis. This view is showing you along Pennsylvania where you can see all those cruisers are lined up and all those officers are standing outside waiting for the casket with Deputy John Durham inside to be brought out. As mentioned, his family will have some final moments with him inside the lobby at Gainbridge Fieldhouse and eventually after the moments outside here of the Fieldhouse, the procession will begin and this is the call out to the community. Get out and align that route. We have it listed on our website, but we know it will eventually pass by the Community Justice Center and show this deputy who laid it all on the line your support. All right, logistically, just speaking to you, many roads in the area uh, will be blocked around Gamebridge Fieldhouse as that procession makes its way to the Community Justice con Campus. If you are not lining the route, just take note of that. But as Nicole mentioned, it is a good idea to uh, show your, your respect and pay tribute to a man who laid down his life uh, on the line to protect the community. Um, of course, the departments are asking as many people as possible to uh, salute, to show their respect as the uh, procession gets underway. Yeah, the Community Justice Center is located on Justice Way and there will be the final 1042 call at that location. Describe to our viewers that moment with the final 1042 call. Yeah, and, and to put that into perspective, so an, uh, an officer uh, typically uh, in the state of Indiana, sometimes those uh, 10 codes um, can be different from state to state, um, but traditionally 1041 means you're marking on duty. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and again, that's uh, there's there's so much significance, I, I, and I and I hope I do it justice. But our lives change from the moment that we mark 1041 or we begin our tour of duty. Um, it, it's telling us that we've got to be at our very best um, because life and, and community as a whole is accepting so much out of us. Mm -hmm. um, and that's sometimes a, a bit of a challenge for us, right? We oftentimes, we, uh, we, we talk about the things that we encounter within our jobs, you know, where you might have a, a sporting event where um, people spend hours, maybe two, three hours warming up for this special mm -hmm. event. That's kind of what we have to kind of go through in our minds and mm -hmm. physically sometimes for the tasks that come before us in this uh, line of work. So when you mark on duty 1041, you've got to kind of transition from that civilian into this different person, this, mm -hmm. this law enforcement officer. When you mark 1042, you kind of put that to rest, so mm -hmm. to speak. Um, we're marking off duty. We're going back to being a civilian. We're going back to being a mother, a father, um, a son, a daughter, um, a brother, a sister. And it's that moment that you get to relax and reflect a little bit. Mm -hmm. But you know the next day's going to be coming again where you mark 1041, you've got to change a little bit. So this marking 1042, it's again, it's um, it, it's it's tough to hear. It's um, always so emotional. Officer, right? Because we always look forward and we feel blessed when we get to that point where we mark 1042. But in, in this case, um, Deputy Durham did not have that opportunity. 
So a, uh, to put this in perspective, every officer receives a 1042 at the end of every shift. Correct. This, in, a, in, a, in an officer funeral, it is the final 1042, the last one that they never got the chance to hear. Precisely. And Deputy Durham was on duty at the time. He never had that opportunity to mark 1042. So this is that opportunity. Um, and as you can imagine, it's always just very heartfelt. Um, sometimes it comes from members of the family. Sometimes it comes from members of the agency. Um, but it's always a wonderful tribute as well. There was a special moment during today's service for Deputy Durham where the legendary NBA player Reggie Miller had a message to his family. Let's take a listen now. Hello everyone, I'm Reggie Miller. And like all of you, we mourn the loss of Deputy John Durham. This is an incredibly sad time, but know this, and I would love to speak to the family, especially the boys, John or Johnny Jr., Corey, Robert, Bryce, your father was incredibly proud of each of you guys. Spoke of you highly. It's funny how fate is at times. Uh, the times your father and I crossed paths, um, all he could talk about was the joyful glee he had in his boys, in his family. So know this, that as he looks down upon us from the heavens, as he lights up a cigar, just know how proud that you guys have turned out to be. As Corey, as you start your journey through the police academy, Robert, Bryce, first of all, thank you for your sacrifice for your country. He's just incredibly, incredibly proud of how you guys turned out and the young men and the fathers that you guys have become. So continue that legacy in his character, in his name, because look around you at Gamebridge right now. This is how much your father was loved to have a service like this with all the people that cared and loved for him so much there in that field house. So I, I appreciate the support that you guys have given me over the years, but more importantly, we support your family and you guys through this time of need. So thank you so much, but no, your dad loved you guys very much. Appreciate your time, thank you. Such a heartfelt tribute from the legendary Reggie Miller, who uh, knew and crossed paths with uh, De Deputy John Durham. Mm -hmm. They were friends, um, and I love that quote that he showed the joyful glee that he had in his boys. Yes, we've learned through a Facebook post from Johnny Durham that Deputy Durham actually worked courtside. That's how he was able to meet Reggie Miller and their last text message between Johnny Durham and John Durham was about Reggie Miller and those shorts and jersey that was we saw on stage there today that he was able to frame. Our Rachel Wilkerson is standing live outside as we wait for the casket of Deputy Durham to be brought out. Rachel, kind of explain to us the atmosphere right now and the mood at this moment. Right now, everyone is just waiting on him to come come out here. You can see they're lined up, and that at that moment they will go into salute. But I wanted to go back to Reggie Miller. Whenever you said that um, Reggie Miller left that message, well, it was a surprise to the family. And one thing that Corey and and the brothers said that they were going to do is stick together. They're going to stick together throughout. We're having a bit of a trouble hearing Rachel, but we will get back to her. But she's talking about that message from Reggie about, you know, telling them to stick together. And they said, we will get through this. It will be difficult. But they have that strong brotherhood in that family. And I will say, as we watched the ceremony along with you at home, we did wonder uh, whether the family knew if mm -hmm. this uh, tribute from Reggie Miller was known to the family. Mm -hmm. And our Rachel Wilkerson telling us that it, it was indeed a surprise to them as well. Mm -hmm. An amazing imagine. surprise. Can you imagine seeing, the, seeing Reggie's face pop up on the screen mm -hmm. there? with that message. Great to see Especially that. with his jersey being on stage, we were mentioning that his son, the last text message they shared was, hey dad, I finally framed the jersey and shorts that you were able to get me because you were friends with Reggie for my birthday. So it was just, you know, I was shocked when yeah, I saw Reggie on really. That was amazing. But we've gotten to learn so much about Deputy John Durham, a man who was described as being brave and dedicated by Sheriff 
Kerry Forrestal, a man that followed in his father's footsteps and became a deputy serving for 38 years here in our community. Quite quite the service there. Uh, we do want to go uh, right back out to our Rachel to Wilkerson out live outside of Gainbridge Fieldhouse. And Rachel, you were telling us that the uh, that the formation has been growing over the last few minutes. And we did speak about uh, the message from Reggie Miller. Um, tell us what you're seeing now and, and, and again, the mood that you're seeing outside. Yes, so I'm out of the frame right now. You can't see me because we are waiting on Deputy Durham to come out of here at just any moment now. And dozens of law enforcement members are here. It's very quiet right now. They're just thinking of their friend and paying their respects to Deputy Durham. When he comes out, they will salute as he makes his way to the coach. Today has all been so much about support, standing together throughout this difficult time. And as I was mentioning, the brother said, they're going to stick together during this difficult time. They said that it's sad but they do want you to know that you can smile whenever you see them because their dad he was such a jokester the life of the party when he met you it just seemed like you knew him for 20 years it wasn't like the first time that you met him and that's just speaks volumes to the character of deputy durham the type of person that he was and it, it wasn't just like that to to his family it was to everyone that he knew including the people that he worked with and the inmates that's a message that the family also wants the community to know is just how much he valued the inmates and the members of mcso the marion county sheriff's office he loves them there are his brothers and sisters and his brothers and sisters are here right now as you can see waiting on him to come out of here and then once he makes his way into the coach they will be followed they will follow him in the procession so we are just waiting on that any moment now mark and nicole our rachel wilkerson live outside of gamebridge fieldhouse for us will be checking in with you rachel thank you in studio here with us we have lieutenant bruce barnes from the noblesville police department has been a member of the honor guard for 25 years and um sadly has been a, a part of many of these ceremonies, but also thankfully you have as well. Um, we're awaiting the procession to happen. And Nicole, uh, you were speaking about what it might be like mm -hmm. um, to be in the procession, what it's like in, in those. To see the community members just lining the street and you know the emotional moments, can you describe to us what that feels like? Yeah, it, it's, um, and again, it's just, um, it's an example of the, the, the communities that, that we live in and that we work in and truly how much they support law enforcement. Um, to see them from, from the youngest of age to, to schools that will let their um, students out and they line the road um, all through different uh, generations and, and to be able to see that support, it's just, uh, it's so heartfelt. And right, right now we're taking a live look as Deputy Durham's sons make their ways to the doors of Gainbridge Fieldhouse. Let's take a listen in.
Right now you're looking at live images at Gainbridge Field House where the funeral service for Marion County Sheriff's Deputy John Durham just wrapped up. We just saw his family make their way out of Gainbridge Field House and his casket was brought to the funeral coach. You can see from this image from the WRTV drone from up above that those officers are now making their ways to their cars as they begin the procession here shortly. Yeah, this ceremony now moves to the procession stage and as the officers uh, disperse there, they'll get into their cars. The procession will now move to the Community Justice Campus uh, where there will be the 1042, the end of watch call and the passing under the garrison flag. We will bring that all to you live here on WRTV as we continue to honor the life of Deputy John Durham. Thanks for being with us.